Welcome Capricorn to your in-depth monthly horoscope for September 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to share some standout details for you to look out for. Then on screen, your event chart right at the start of the month, which provides a lot of illuminating information. Then as the month unfolds, I'll give you all the key influences and exact dates relevant to your sign. Now, if you recall Capricorn, the mighty but tiny Pluto came into your sign in 2008. It left briefly for 11 weeks in 2023 and since the 21st of January this year it's also not been in your sign. But as we start this month Pluto returns for one final visit to you through to November the 19th. I need to unpack that for you because it's very important indeed. We also need to be mindful of your ruler Saturn. Saturn's always influential all of the time, but no more so, so than this month. We also have on the third of this month a very exciting new moon. And then on the fourth, Mars, the planet of thrust, the planet of desire, moves into your sector of relationships, but for eight long weeks. This is very rare. Usually Mars takes six weeks through each sign. On the 9th, an important piece of information or a communication can come to you that you've been waiting for, and it can be a green light moment. The 18th sees a lunar eclipse, the first in a new series. This one is in the sign of Pisces, which is about everyday communication, but the weaving, shifting, misty energy of Neptune applies to the moon, and that can be complex over the next six months. Then on the 22nd, we have the autonomal equinox, which ushers in Cardinal Quadrant 3, a very important part of the astrological calendar. The next 13 weeks are all about finding balance, but for you, around your professional hopes. There is a more sociable dimension that comes with Venus shifting on the 23rd, but as the month comes to a close, you could be thinking very carefully about the skills you want to learn or the skills you can deploy when it comes to your professional hopes. I'm astrologer Patrick Arundel. If you're new to my channel, it's lovely to have your company. If you have any thoughts, please do share them. This is very much a community. If you're a returning visitor, thank you again for joining me. All your views and interactions are truly appreciated. If you've yet to sub to the channel, please do so now and click that bell notification symbol and help the channel to thrive. I'm a consultant astrologer. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, please check out my testimonials below. You can see how other people have found working closely with me. Finally, my very special and unique personal horoscope offer. You can order your year 2025 transit forecast now and get the rest of this year free. 30% off if you get my special package, which includes your life roadmap report. Totally unique to you and will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, how you can work with these energies better future forwards. And the combination of all this knowledge, tremendous value, gives you lots of information to work off over the next 18 months. See below for more. So on the screen now Capricorn you can see your event chart right at the start of the month and Pluto is still in the sign of Aquarius because it's later on on the Monday that it inverses back into your sign but you can see as we start the month at midnight it's at one minute still in the sign of Aquarius but in the retrograde. Now, one of the things that Pluto does do as you enter this month is that it forges a very fine link with Venus. This combination of these two planetary influences suggests if you do have a very dynamic connection to someone in a business situation that goes just that goes beyond just your technical ability and experience. You seem to have some kind of natural rapport that can be very telling as you come into this new month. 
But Pluto inversing into your sign through to the 19th of November, and particularly if you're born right at the end of the sign of Capricorn in the third decan, that really points towards the potential for some extra transformations to play out even yet. But this will be the last time that Pluto will visit your sign. It won't come back in our lifetimes. But also at the start of this month, you can see that Saturn, your ruler, continues its retrograde in house three. The third house is about quick communications, quick thoughts, can be where we pivot, but the sign of Pisces, which is the host, is a water sign. So if we say things quickly that have some kind of emotional component, but we don't think it through, it can be a mischief maker. So what Saturn's been asking you to do over the last 16 or 17 months since it arrived here is to slow down the way you have quick communications and perhaps be a little bit more measured and thoughtful about saying the things you want to express. Now that could have created, to be honest, a degree of frustration, particularly since the retrograde began. Or you may have found that moving around had some uh, unexpected inhibitions. For example, if you have tried to travel somewhere, there may have been a technical issue. You may have even got lost. You may have found that your relationship with neighbours has become more abrasive. It's also possible, third house ruled by neighbours, also possible that things are not quite so sweet with siblings. But one of the things that Saturn can do, and particularly because it's your ruler, you understand this more than any other sign. If we work hard and apply ourselves, it can give us a reward. So you may have started to learn a new subject. You may have imp imparted skills and knowledge you have to others in a way that they've been very grateful for. So it's not all bad. But as we come into this month, it is still in a right angle with Jupiter, the planet of growth. Saturn is generally about retraction or at least stability. So the two don't really collaborate that well with one another. Now the exact point of tension was on the 19th of August, but they're still within a close enough alignment, three degree orb, to make it impactful as you come into this month. And Jupiter's in the part of your situation to do with commitments, obligations, but also your physical health. So if you do enter September feeling a bit below par, one of the things I would suggest you don't do is try to do too much too quickly in order to try to overcompensate that low energy. So for example, you may decide you want to be very virtuous, which is very sixth house, but if you're too virtuous, it could just wear you out before you even get going. So if you are wanting to commit to a new focus around balancing your time and being a bit more careful of how you use your energy, and that could mean saying no to some requests for help at work. So Jupiter can encourage you to find your voice because it's in the sign of Gemini, which is about communication. But also Mars is in this location too. That's very assertive, but that's being squared off by Neptune. So whether it's people immediately around you or the daily grind or just responsibilities and obligations, somehow or another, your nervous system could feel suboptimal as you go into this month but it's not gonna last because although Mars is squared off by Neptune in the early days of this month, once it moves into your opposite sign of Cancer, it's activating a greater strength to engage with life's challenges and ultimately life's headwinds, which we all experience. But Mars in the seventh house can be very assertive. So if there has been someone who's been taking you for granted, I think you'll find your voice from that point on. Also, the new moon, which occurs on the 3rd, is for you in the part of your chart that's to do with freedom. So if you go into this month feeling a little bit uh, overwhelmed, a little bit under-resourced, don't feel you quite have the spark that you want, Pluto moving back to your sign can help you. Saturn squared off with Jupiter is a challenge. Neptune squared off by Mars is a challenge, but the new moon on the 3rd and Mars moving into your 7th can start to see you change 
the equilibrium of the situation. And remember, there could be somebody quite influential who takes a shine to you. And maybe because you are a little bit more cautious, maybe it is because your natural way of being is to take steady steps forwards instead of being, you know, overly optimistic. That person could actually really appreciate that part of you. So don't be tempted in the early of this part of this month to big yourself up or to uh, try to be too much of a good egg. I don't think that's the right thing for you to do. But there is a very flamboyant square as this month begins between Uranus in your fifth house, where you're dazzling people with some different ideas, surprising yourself at times, I feel, but that's squaring with Mercury in the eighth, initially as we come into the month. When it comes to your resources, I wouldn't be tempted to splash out spontaneously on a big ticket item. Try to hold off if you can. And that new moon, which occurs on the third, also forges a great link to the part of fortune. And a ninth house new moon can be about contracts. So that's promising. Also the ninth house, very much about independence, adventure and travel. If you've yet to book that vacation, give yourself the permission as you set your intentions on this new moon to give yourself the opportunity to change things up, be more spontaneous. Remember that old saying Capricorn, variety is the spice of life. But that move of Mercury back to the sign of Virgo on the 9th is also very powerful. If you have been trying to escape a situation then felt really penned in, perhaps by the physical circumstances, perhaps there was a financial issue that you couldn't leave a job, for example. Almost like the Eight of Swords in Tarot, maybe you felt encased. There is a chance that that kind of encasing energy could show up in week two this month because the sun goes opposite your ruler, Saturn, and they're both squaring up to Jupiter. But you know, what actually Saturn is doing is protecting you. And sometimes if things don't go exactly our way, it can actually be to our advantage because that new moon could tempt you to be almost too buccaneering in your approach. As Mercury comes along to join up, then you can bring more clarity to the discussion. And on the 11th, Mercury emerges from its post-retrograde shadow and things will start to fall into place. But we do have that mesmerizing lunar eclipse, the first one in a new polar series between the signs of Virgo and Pisces, which begins on the 18th. This provides a backdrop of energy for the next six months. But because it's so close to Neptune, if you are someone who's got expressive ideas to share, so for example, if you, you're writing a book or you have your own website or a blog, or you do something creative where you want to convey your message, the shimmering magic of Neptune could be great, particularly if you're using photography or film to illuminate your idea. But in terms of making progress breaking out, breaking three, the ninth house energy of the position of the sun, Neptune could drain energy again. So the energy you started to pick up could dissipate. How would you deal with this? Well, I feel uh, Capricorn, it's by having a very narrow focus. Don't spread yourself too thinly and you can still make progress and use your enlightened imagination and uh, sensitivity that will come from that eclipse to guide your progress over the next half year. But on the 22nd, it's a major event for us all, the autonomal equinox. The sun returns to the sign of Libra, but for you, it goes to its highest point in the sky. This sunlight position is where you can attract acclaim and recognition, and it can happen for you over the following 13 weeks. Maybe that ninth house energy that was showing up earlier in the month is not just about personal escapism. Maybe you've needed to find a job that actually in inspires you and arouses your passion. If things have become too mundane, that's what you're being guided to do. And because this autonomous equinox links so powerfully to Pluto in your sign, that can be a real uh, astral leg up to your future progress. But the 23rd does see Venus move into a more sociable sector, going into Scorpio, deep and passionate. Is there someone 
in your uh, friendship group who actually is uh, rather intriguing to you, watch out for their body language. They may not tell you straight away. You may have to wait a little longer for that privilege. But the 26th sees Mercury replacing Venus in Libra. And if you do feel professionally that it's a time to adapt skills and experiences from the past with a course that updates your skills, or you adapt your curriculum vitae and use different slices of your background in a fresh applied way. A great opportunity to do so as the month comes to a close could see you offered a new role, doing an important presentation or perhaps applying for a, a new uh, job in a completely different environment. So September is without doubt a very, very powerful month with Pluto returning to your sign. And because Saturn, your ruler, is so prevalent in that square to Jupiter at the start of the month, in the opposition to the Sun, and with Mars moving into your sector of relating, but also competition. So you're going to gain a lot of authority and a lot of thrust as this month goes on. But the overwhelming theme is to choose your words with care. Have a great September, Capricorn. Take care and goodbye for now.